I promise this video is gonna be really helpful. If you've ever worked with async before, you probably know how hard it is, especially in JavaScript. Promises are, for the most part, good, but there's some exceptions, and I hate to reject the norm. The goal here is to resolve any issues you might have in your head. Sorry for the, the string of puns there. I couldn't help myself. We have a lot to talk about here, and I wanna show off specifically why promise.all is probably not what you wanna be using most of the time. Here I have a really basic React app just so I can bind a button quickly. And this button, when you click it, it runs a promise that's using promise.all. In here, I have a promise. And in here, I have an array with one through five. And I map all of these to the promise async function call work. And then I await promise.all on all of those calls. And if we look at this function here, we wait for however long, in this case, it's the number you give it times a thousand, so that's number of seconds. So we wait for i seconds, and then we return the number squared. Obviously, an arbitrary wait like this is not how things are going to work in your application. But if you're fetching data from the web, reading IO, or doing any of the many things that are asynchronous, chances are you've had to wait inside of a function like this before, sometimes in a function that's called a bunch of times. And here, if I was to go run this, you'll quickly see the work starts running for all of them, and then they each take one to five seconds, and we get back our results. Oh, I did XOR, not power. I hate JavaScript. And this time, the numbers will actually be squared because I'm finally learning this index for language I use every day. But what happens if one of these fails? This is where promise.all kind of sucks. Because when I do this, we decide to just fail on four. Four failed immediately. These other promises are running, but it failed and went to main, which means we hit this catch. If I was to delete this try catch and run this one last time, we get an uncaught promise where we click the button, but all these promises are still running. It doesn't cancel the promises running in the background. We just never get the result. All of these resolved promises have effectively vanished into the ether for us to never get back. And that, to be frank, that sucks. It's not great that we have work here that was completed, that has results that might be useful to us. And because one of them failed, all of them both keep running and give us nothing. When any one promise in a promise.all fails, you don't get results anymore. And that just, period sucks. I prefer using promise.all settled for this reason. This file is identical, except I have a second function here, main settled. And the only thing that is different here is the promise.all settled call instead of promise.all. So if we go to this page instead, promise.all will do the exact thing it did before. I can quickly show it where main failed for reason and we never get a response back. But with all settled, we see we didn't get the error to appear because it was actually caught by all settled. And we got results. And in here, we see four of these calls were fulfilled, and one of them was rejected. The thing that sucks about this more than anything is the typing of it. Because now, with the promise all settled, we got promise settled results. So const errors equals rejected const successes dot map. But the problem here is even though we only have fulfilled, so we now know we always have the value, the type is still wrong because it could technically be unsettled because this filter is not smart enough to know that after it, we always have the fulfilled case. Whereas with promise.all, we always know. And if I was to do const success equals results dot, I don't even need to filter it because it's just the type of results is just number array. There's nothing to do. So I pointed out that we can do a type guard. Oh, wrong button. <laughs> this is not great. This is not great at all. You even need to know the type from the function, which is obnoxious. You could probably write a custom function that is grab errors and successes from the, the type, but yeah, 
if you're using this properly, this isn't pleasant. But on the bright side, what it makes you do is be considerate of the error and success cases when you're running against an array. When you run an array of promises, you might actually want them to run in the background and silently succeed if one fails, but chances are you don't. And the benefit of all settled is it kind of brute forces you to make a decision about these cases. And almost every time I've seen a promise dot all, it's full of nasty edge cases that confuse the hell out of people consuming it. And when you switch it to all settled, you have to do a little more of this work thinking about it. The benefit comes soon after, which is, Suddenly you understand how your error cases work. When other people go to read the code and figure out what is and isn't happening, it's much easier to figure that out now too. Generally speaking, I cannot think of many, if any use cases for promise.all. And this is why I recommend all settled whenever I can. How about you? Do you have any use cases for promise.all? I'd love to hear why you use it instead of all settled, but generally it's hard for me to recommend. If you want to learn a bit more about things people use incorrectly in JavaScript, I'll pin a video here all about the ways that you're using objects wrong because God, everyone uses objects wrong for some reason. Thank you guys as always. Peace nerds.